Welcome to Emergency Response Team Training. This uh, video presentation is being made to uh, help with training throughout the state in, in regards to uh, what's going on with the COVID virus and, and also making training more available to everybody who may not be able to attend the regional trainings. ERT, the Emergency Response Team's mission statement is to provide on-site safety and security support operations and minister to the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of volunteers during times of disaster. We uh, try to be as flexible and fluid as possible to help all the ministry areas um, on site at either a training or a deployment site. Um, our main concern is safety and security, but we also assist in admin and registration of people. Uh, checking IDs, making sure people fill out their uh, personal information forms and get those turned in, and helping uh, with logistics and the other areas set up and get ready for the response. What to expect in ERT? We support the initial mobilization for training and deployment sites. As you see on the screen, that is a, uh, a deployment site in Panama City for Hurricane Michael. Uh, that's what we looked at, looked like from the air, and uh, as you can tell, it's, we create our own city when we uh, when we arrive at a site. We prepare for deployment. We pull uh, the satellite images and local roadmaps of the area we'll be in. We collect contact information for the host church, local authorities, and organizations. We partner with local churches church leadership to gain access and orientation of necessary facilities and equipment. We partner with the White Hat and Blue Hat leaders to complete initial site assessment and determine the site plan for the deployment. We work with logistics to coordinate and organize arrival, placement, and setup of all DR and partner assets. And we monitor setup of deployment site and act as safety officers for the uh, duration of the call out. If as we're making our rounds and we're conducting our, uh, our job as security and safety, if we see something going on that we figure is not safe or we feel is not safe, we need to uh, speak up and put a stop to it until it can be more safe. When we're setting up our ERT command, we need easy access to the location, visible to visitors and volunteers when they arrive. Um, at the ERT information desk, we have the site address and contact information, numbers for local police, fire, hospital, and walk-in clinics, uh, the local EOC, Emergency Operations Center, the local church facility contact, that would be the pastor, the facilities minister, the maintenance man, people that would be able to tell you where uh, breaker boxes are, fire hydrants, uh, AEDs, uh, any emergency equipment that may be needed, um, escape routes, uh, elevators, stairways for uh, evacuation purposes. We utilize uh, state and regional ERT command box and in that we try to have admin paperwork for sign-ins if we happen to arrive before the admin people do, our ERT safety vest, uh, two-way radios for communications, safety supplies, a basic first aid kit, and our parking flashlights or batons. On the first aid kit, we do try to administer first aid in, in a first response nature, but in case of an emergency where there is an injury, we notify 911 and get EMS on the way. We uh, are a liaison for the host church, state and local authorities. We support advanced team response and establish ERT as a point of contact with the host church and local authorities and support DR functions. Uh, you'll see in the picture um, that is a church in North Carolina that we were at. We usually put up a sign out front that notifies the public that we are there. We provide 24-hour security and champion the safety for volunteers, DR assets, and host church property. When we're there, we are responsible for whatever goes on and we try to maintain security and know who is coming and going at all times. Uh, that includes our volunteers, uh, people from the church, and visitors and, and citizens who may need our assistance. Uh, we do work 24-hour shifts and uh, 
you, if you are on the ERT team, you will be asked to sometimes work a midnight shift and work at night. We do have 24-hour security at deployment sites. This includes, like I said before, the DR volunteers, the host church facilities, DR equipment assets, partner equipment assets, and partner equipment assets is uh, the, sometimes the state uh, provides equipment uh, such as generators, uh, tents, uh, auxiliary lighting, um, fork trucks, stuff like that, and we're responsible for keeping an eye on that stuff too. We try to maintain teams of two at all times. Uh, that way you always have a partner and you always have somebody to watch your back. We ensure all volunteers are credentialed. Um, the credentials are state issued by uh, Disaster Relief. They have your name, your picture, your badge number, which is your the last four social security number, your region and a, a letter C, which means you have back, passed a background check. We maintain the boundary of deployment site and ensure control of the, the ingress and egress points of, of the site. We try to maintain that as much as possible. Sometimes we aren't able to because of the, the layout of the, of the facility, but we try to maintain as much security as we can. We uh, partner with equipment assets, uh, the command unit, which is our communication center and our uh, admin uh, office. Um, it's, we usually use the PCC, which is a, a mobile trailer and has tents on both sides. It's air conditioned um, and we, main we maintain uh, control over who goes in and out of that uh, to make sure that uh, the admin people and the, admin pe and the, and the uh, leadership like uh, Delton and Marvin who are working in there don't get disturbed unnecessarily. Uh, the feeding unit uh, usually consists of either unit one or unit two or the church facility kitchen. Uh, we maintain uh, security in that area. The cleanup and recovery units, which are trailers, uh, tractors, equipment with uh, chainsaws, shovels, that kind of stuff. We try to park them in an area that is easily watched um, on the night shift. The shower trailers, uh, logistics supply trailers, um, storage trailers and refrigerator units. On an extended period of time when we have a call out, we have as many as 10 or even more um, semi-trailers, 53-foot trailers that are used for storage of, of dry goods and refrigerator goods. And we have to keep an eye on the refrigerator units to make sure that they are fueled and maintaining temperature. And one of the contact numbers that we need to maintain as, as an ERT team member or ERT leader is to have a contact number for somebody to maintain that um, air conditioning or, or cooling unit if it goes goes bad or needs fuel. Uh, we keep an eye on the heavy equipment, the parked vehicles, generators. Um, also need to make sure that they are fueled at all times. Uh, it may not be our responsibility to keep them fueled, but to keep an eye on the fuel level to uh, notify logistics if they are running low. And miscellaneous and other equipment, whatever else, uh, might be brought on site for whatever reason. It's our responsibility to keep an eye on that. We encourage the health and wellness and support of our disaster relief volunteers. Uh, like I said before, we provide basic first aid for all the ER volunteers, but if there's an emergency, like somebody's having a health issue, we either get them to a hospital or call EMS, call 911 for EMS. We provide a quick assessment of injuries uh, know when to call for help and arrange for transportation to a medical facility when necessary. And that could either be in, in, one, in a private vehicle, having one of their team members take them, or have uh, EMS respond. Um, if somebody is in the field at a cleanup and recovery site and they have a medical emergency, uh, the blue hat at that scene needs to make the determination that they are transported to uh, a medical facility directly from the point of injury. Uh, we recommend uh, first aid training from the Red Cross or any other um, entity or agency that provides Red Cross uh, EM, uh, first aid training. 
Uh, we also uh, recommend that people are familiar with and receive AED training to be able to operate an AED machine. We monitor, monitor the volunteers as returning from job site. Uh, look at them and see if they look extremely tired or, or, or exhausted. Uh, if, if need be, have them sit down and have a, uh, have a bottle of water or a Gatorade. And we use the stress continuum uh, card to uh, see how they're actually feeling uh, mentally, spiritually, and uh, sit down and talk to them if they need to. Sometimes we just need to encourage each other and, uh, and work together because we're all a team. We all work together. Uh, support the spiritual needs of the volunteers and pray with them. Just pat them on the back, tell them they're doing a good job, tell them you're proud to work with them and uh, partnership with the chaplains and other DR leadership to keep an eye on everybody's well-being. We support the operations of other ministries as needed in partnership with the on-site Blue Hat and White Hat leaders, uh, support and check-in orientation of arriving volunteers, and in the partnership with the admin team, sometimes we are the ones that uh, have the uh, the personal information forms, the PIP forms to have them fill out and then we turn them in to uh, admin as they're completed. Well, when, at, when we're on a deployment site, we have people that come in asking for help. Uh, we manage the walk-in uh, inquiries and manage and complete the intake of the work orders if necessary um, to uh, be in cooperation with the cleanup and recovery and the admin teams. We work with the feeding team to establish and monitor traffic patterns in case of distribution of food and recovery um, supplies. And also uh, if Red Cross or some other um, partner agency is working with distribu distribution of food, uh, we monitor the traffic of those vehicles coming in and out as they pick up and drop off. We support the logistics team by assisting in equipment maintenance, like I said before, housekeeping, etc. Keep an eye on things, and if you see something needs to be done, either take care of it yourself or ha have the proper person take care of it. Our required attire is uh, our credentials, like I talked about before. Um, disaster relief shirt, either a blue or yellow shirt. Our yellow hat or blue hat, which would be the team leader. Uh, ERT safety vest, which is either the, like the one you see in the picture, or we have gone just to a solid yellow uh, vest, which uh, depicts that we are the ERT team. Uh, long pants, jeans uh, are preferred. If it's really hot and you're not in danger of anything, you could wear shorts, but make, make sure you wear closed-toed shoes or work boots, something that would protect your feet. Uh, we have a packing list that's uh, recommended, uh, a flashlight or a small LED flashlight that uses uh, re easily replaced batteries. We say trip double A batteries, but whatever batteries, uh, you're responsible for that. A cell phone and charger for your communication with, uh, with other team members and other DR people, plus being, being able to contact home and let them know you're okay. Your bedding would be a cot, air mattress, a sleeping bag, and we say twin only because sometimes you're, well, twin only because you're sleeping by yourself. Uh, you're not gonna be sleeping with your spouse, uh, you, you're in, usually in a man area or a woman area. Um, very rarely are men and women allowed, our spouses allowed to sleep together. There are special needs uh, situations sometimes. That has to be approved by Delton or Marvin. Uh, personal hygiene items, uh, showering uh, things, shampoo, soap, deodorant, razors, whatever you need to take care of yourself. Uh, personal dietary necessities, if you have uh, dietary needs, uh, make sure your medications, uh, you have your medications if you are, are, are need to take medications. And w with uh, regards to medications, those are for yourself only. You're not to share even an aspirin or a Tylenol or anything like that with anybody else. Uh, if anybody has a headache, they need to provide their own medication. Uh, like I said before, towels for showering, rain gear, jackets for uh, cold weather. And uh, most importantly is your Bible and devotion. Uh, make sure you maintain your, spirit, your spiritual well-being. Um, you know, sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we get uh, depressed and discouraged. We have to call on the Lord to help us, to help us and strengthen us. And uh, don't be afraid to act, talk to anybody else. You know, find, find another team member, find a chaplain. Uh, just 
be able to open up and, and, and let your heart out and say, hey, I'm tired, I need, some, need somebody to talk to. Um, what are we frequently asked questions? What are expect, expectations for shift rotation? Do I have to work overnight? Sometimes you do. Um, the night shift is probably the most important um, shift because when we are uh, out there working at night, the cleanup and recovery people and the feeding people are sleeping and we need to give them the assurance and security that their stuff is being taken care of and watched over so they can rest and be able to work the next day. Will you have the opportunity to go off site and work with a team during the call out? If you feel like you can do that and uh, the, your shifts are covered for your ERT shifts and you want to go out with a uh, cleanup and recovery team or a logistics team to uh, deliver equipment or something like that, make sure that you check with your blue hat and then uh, make sure that the blue hat for over whatever team uh, you're going with is approval of that. Can you go off site to get a meal? Uh, you can if you want to. The meals that are provided on site are always good meals, very nourishing. They may not be a uh, five-star uh, restaurant, but they're always good meals and very well prepared. Our uh, feeding people are, are very safety conscious in preparation and, uh, and preservation of the meals. Our policy on concealed carry, um, if you are a licensed or if you have your carry concealed permit, uh, we are not going to tell you not to carry. Just be advised that, be aware that uh, if you use a weapon, you are responsible for whatever happens after that. Um, like I said, uh, I didn't introduce myself, but I am Luther Willis. I'm the ERT Stake Task Force Leader. Uh, you see my phone number and uh, my, my email address there. Micah Roden is the Assistant Stake Task Force Leader for the state. Uh, his information is there. Um, he uh, is a phenomenal young man. Uh, he's a great leader, and God has really blessed him with him being blessed us with him being on the team. And he has taken over and actually been the white hat at several sites uh, when we needed a leader at the sites. The next slide is the regional coordinators, uh, one through seven. Their names and information is there, and uh, that's also on the disaster relief website. Um, like I said before, on your uh, ID card, the first four numbers are your last four digits of your social security number. The next number is your region. So whatever number that is would be, uh, I'm correct, the first number is your region. The first number is region. Then the next four is your uh, four, last four is your social security number. Whatever the number is, the first number of your ID number is your region, and that would correspond with uh, your regional coordinator, and that would be who you would need to be in contact with, and they would be in contact with you in case of a call out. Since you're not here, if you have any questions, you have my number, and you have the numbers of your regional coordinators, you can call them and ask them any questions. Um, usually when we have an on-site training, we walk through the site and explain everything that we have uh, talked about. Um, if you're not able to attend a training in person, uh, when you are deployed to a site, we will do a walkthrough to familiarize ourselves with that site and uh, you'll get to know what's there. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.